Hey, what's going on? It's Justin Dickmeyer from engineeringtrainingexam.com. And in this video, we will discuss straight line depreciation. In this video, we will define the topic of straight line depreciation, walk through the general workflow of solving such problems, and jump into working an example of something we may see on the exam. The topic of straight line depreciation falls under the main category of engineering economics. Equations, symbols, tables, and information on the various topics covered in engineering economics can be referenced on pages 114 through 120 of the NCEES Supplied Reference Handbook, 8th edition, 2nd revision. Straight line depreciation is one of the most commonly used depreciation methods around, and it's no coincidence that it's one of the easiest as well. Straight line depreciation assumes that the asset that's being depreciated does so, does so at a constant rate. For example, if a certain asset was purchased at $10,000 and has a salvage value of $1,000, then its value will depreciate $9,000 over its lifespan. If the lifespan is nine years, then the asset would depreciate uniformly at $1,000 per year. So let's walk through the general workflow. The goal of a straight line depreciation problem is to determine the depreciation of an asset at a specific point during its lifespan. With this depreciation defined, we could be asked to do one of many things with it, but the basis of these problems is to know how to find that value in the first place. The general expression for solving straight line depreciation is D sub J is equal to C minus S sub N divided by N, where D sub J is equal to the depreciation in year J, C is the cost of the piece of equipment referred to as basis in the tax law, S of N is the salvage value in year N, and N is the year being analyzed. The problem statement will typically provide all these values, so we, all we need to do is plug them in and use our calculator to solve. So let's run through an example. An asset initially costs $5,500 when installed. The asset is said to have a five-year lifespan and a salvage value of $800. Using straight line depreciation, what is the depreciation value in the third year of its life? So let's run through the solution. The goal is to determine what the depreciation charge will be in the third year for this specific unnamed asset. Remember, depreciation is the systematic allocation of the capital cost over its useful lifespan. To determine the depreciation charge for any year within the useful lifespan, we can refer to the formula found on page 115 of the NCES Supplied Reference Handbook, which states that the depreciation charge in any year is D sub J is equal to C minus S sub N divided by N, where D sub J is the depreciation in year J, C is the cost of the piece of equipment, S sub N is the salvage value in year N, and N is the year being analyzed. In this problem, we are given C, our cost is $5,500, we're given a salvage value S sub N of $800, and we're given N a period of five years. Plugging these values into the equation, we find that D sub J is equal to $5,500 minus 800 divided by five, which is equal to $940. The depreciation is uniform throughout its lifespan. Therefore, in the third year, the depreciation charge will be 
as it would be in any other year. There isn't much we could do to go wrong working the straight line depreciation problems. With the formula given to us directly in the reference manual, as long as we use the correct values for the initial cost, salvage value, and its lifespan, it's a simple plug and play problem. However, sometimes problem statements will give us the salvage value as a percentage or require us to do some other intermediary calculation. And in this case, if we are sloppy with these simple calculations, we may set ourselves up for the ultimate failure at the end. Well, that's it for this video. Do you know anybody that would benefit from this lesson? If so, let's try to reach out and help others by sharing this video with them. Also, take a second to like this video and leave a comment and tell me how it will help you move forward in your goal of becoming a professional engineer. And finally, type in engineerintrainingexam.com into your URL bar and visit the site to download for free the transcript to this video along with the example problem and solution we worked. While you are there, you can also sign up for the free EIT Academy Bootcamp, 137 pages and over 50 practice problems and solutions to get you on track to passing this exam.